Hello everyone. So a long time ago, I had heard about a reaction called the Pharaoh's Serpent. It's really awesome, and I thought it was about time for me to make my own. The Pharaoh's Serpent reaction involves taking a sample of mercury thiocyanate and igniting it and seeing what happens after that. Most people, they don't have samples of mercury thiocyanate laying around, me included. So I'm gonna have to make some using some mercury that I rescued from some old thermometers. As you probably know, mercury is a silvery liquid element. It's only one of two liquid elements on the periodic table. This one's element number 80. It happens to be very dense, about 14 times as dense as water. So even this little vial has a lot of weight to it. Now the first step in obtaining a sample of mercury thiocyanate is dissolving the mercury so that it has a chance to precipitate with the thiocyanate. So let's head over to the fume hood. I took a small sample of mercury, put it in a beaker, and then I added some concentrated nitric acid to it. And the reaction was very vigorous. You can see that there's a green color in the solution as the mercury gets into solution. And there's also some brown gas coming out the top. That gas is nitrogen dioxide. It's one of the main components of smog. And it's very irritating, so that's why we have to do it in the fume hood. After a few minutes, the reaction was completed and the mercury was dissolved. I did boil it for a few more minutes to drive off any excess NO2, and at this point the solution appears sort of a pinkish color as the brown gas comes off. While my mercury solution cooled down, I prepared a solution of potassium thiocyanate. Potassium thiocyanate is an ionic compound containing potassium and the thiocyanate ion, which has sulfur, carbon, and nitrogen. After both solutions were prepared and cooled, I began slowly adding the potassium thiocyanate solution to my mercury solution. And as you can see, there's a little bit of precipitation happening. Mercury thiocyanate is insoluble in water. And so we're getting this white precipitate along with a little bit of brown color uh, as the potassium thiocyanate solution is added. So you'll see little flashes of brown, but mainly a white precipitate. I kept adding the potassium thiocyanate solution for a while just to make sure that I had enough to completely react the mercury. I wanted the mercury to be the limiting reactant and not the excess reactant. Just about the time I was done adding the potassium thiocyanate, I did start to notice that the beaker was getting warm and that there were some little bubbles forming. And then things got out of hand really quickly. You can see the whole thing got really foamy and built up and over the side of my beaker in the fume hood. And it was really scary and it lasted a few seconds and I wasn't sure what was happening. And uh, thankfully it calmed down. But then of course I had to stop what I was doing and do like a massive cleanup inside the fume hood. Thankfully that reaction did not happen again. And so I went ahead with my procedure of filtering and drying my mercury thiocyanate. I won't show you that though, because after that terrifying reaction, filtering and drying is kind of boring. And now comes the fun part, lighting it on fire. So that you don't lose sleep at night, wondering how this crazy reaction happens, let's take a look at the reactions. There's a series of reactions that are either decomposition or combustion. Starting with this decomposition reaction of the mercury 2 thiocyanate, which breaks down into mercury 2 sulfide, carbon disulfide, and carbon nitride. These last two undergo further reactions. The carbon disulfide reacts with some oxygen from the air to produce carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide gas, and the graphitic carbon nitride then decomposes into producing some dicyan gas and some nitrogen gas. Now this doesn't happen all the time. A lot of this goes unreacted and that becomes the main component of the crazy structure that we see growing out of the dish. 
So there is some of that left. And there's also a possibility of mercury sulfide reacting with oxygen from the air to produce some liquid mercury and some sulfur dioxide gas again. But I did not see any liquid mercury in my reaction, so either this reaction didn't happen or it happened on such a small scale I couldn't see it. So there you have it, my version of the Pharaoh Serpent. I hope you enjoyed it, bye.